and we're going to say now we got no cash it's five year useful life property no salvage value it is disposed of in the middle of year five so what we're saying now here is we have this depreciation accumulated depreciation but it's not fully depreciated and if that's the case, then we got to make sure that we depreciate it up to the point of sale because depreciation is an adjusting entry process and we may only do it every month or every year. And therefore, if it's not the end of the month or the end of the year, uh, it's, it may not be fully depreciated at the point in time that we sell it. And so we have to record whatever depreciation has passed to the point in time that we sell and then, uh, and then we can go through our sales process. So in this case, we're going to say that the cost we're going to calculate the depreciation and we're going to figure out that the component that hasn't been depreciated yet. So it's going to be straight line method. We're just going to take the cost 110,000 useful life said it was five years. If we divide that out, we're going to say 110 divided by five. So it should be 22 a year. And what we're saying, it was, it was, it was the middle of year four. So if I look here, we got 88,000. So if I took, uh, 88,000 divided by 22,000, it's been depreciated over four years. And we're selling it in the middle of the fifth year. So it should have half another year to depreciate. So we need to add half a year of depreciation before we dispose of it. So we're just going to divide this by two. And then say this equals the 22 divided by 2. And that should give us our 11,000. So once again, the straight line method, we just took the cost divided by the useful life. Gives us the depreciation per year. We had one half a year not yet depreciated divided by 2. That gives us our 11,000 that we need to record as depreciation before uh, we then dispose of the equipment or record the disposing. So it's going to be our normal adjusting journal entry to do that. And that's going to be uh, accumulated depreciation going up and depreciation expense. And you kind of just want to have this one memorized. So depreciation expense, it's an adjusting journal entry, uh, depreciation expense on the income statement, and uh, depre accumulated depreciation on the balance sheet. Expenses only go up typically. So we're going to increase it by doing the same thing to it, another debit. So I'm going to copy the depreciation expense here. We'll put that up top, paste it, one, two, three, four hour. I'm just going to say equals this 11,000 we calculated. Then I'm going to put a credit uh, for, I'm going to use a negative of that number. Gives us a credit of 11,000 and that's going to go to accumulated depreciation. So we'll copy accumulated depreciation, right click, copy. Put that in B43, right click and paste, one, two, three. And that'll give us our information there for our first journal entry. So let's record this first and then keep moving forward. So we'll record the depreciation. So I'm going to go down here in H51 and say equals and point to that 11,000. Bring in the depreciation up to 11,000 and bring in our net income down by 11,000. The next piece will go to accumulated depreciation in H45. So we're going to say in H45, this equals and point to that 11,000, bringing the balance up from 88,000 by 11,000 to 99,000. So now we can see that there was an effect on net income and we, we have 99,000 in accumulated depreciation. The book value then is 110,000 minus 99,000 or 11,000 which is a half of another year of depreciation left. So we've got uh, 11,000 left. That's the book value. Now, in this one, we're saying we didn't get any cash for it. We just disposed of it before it was fully depreciated and we didn't get any scrap for it or anything. So I'm going to make another journal entry. Is cash affected? We're going to say no and then just go through our normal process to get this uh, equipment off the books, meaning we have equipment on the books. We need to, it to go down, so I'm going to do the opposite thing to it. So I'm going to copy that. It's a debit. We're going to credit it. I'm going to skip a line for a new journal entry and skip another line to put it on the bottom. Right click and paste one, two, three. That's going to be a credit. I'm going to put a negative of 110,000. We can indent it, go into the Home tab, Alignment, Increase Indenting. 
then the accumulated depreciation needs to go off the books too. If we have our worksheet, we can see here, okay, it's 99,000 that we need to make go to zero. If you're working a book problem and they didn't, and you don't have the, uh, the sheet here, the Excel, the um, trial balance, then you'd have to, it would have to tell you that it's 88,000 and then you'd have to add the 11,000 for our journal entry to note that it's now at 99,000 in some way. You might use uh, T accounts to do that, but uh, just that's what we'd have to track. That's why it's best, it's nicest to actually see a trial balance. If you don't have one in front of you, it's good just to use another trial balance just to note that it is a credit balance account and put it into context. So even if you don't have the same numbers, it could be useful to look at. So then I'm going to copy this accumulated depreciation, put that on top, B45, right click and paste, one, two, three, the amount will be 99,000. And then we've got a difference, of course, we're out of balance here. So we're going to need a debit in this case of, one, of uh, what is that, uh, 10th, and that's our 11,000, of course. And if we highlight it, instead of trying to, we have the 11,000 here, and then we're going to do that with our negative uh, plug form. Now, we know that it's going to be a debit because the debits are losing here. So we need a debit. So we'll put it in C47. I'm going to put a negative SUM, use it in our plug formula, double click the sum function, and highlight from the 99 down to the 110. Now this is going to be a debit, and it's also often confusing once again to say, well, is that a gain or a loss? And if you look on, if you look on it, it's a debit, and it's on the income statement, and so that means it's going to be kind of like acting as an expense, which will bring down net income, like a loss will. Uh, the other, <clears throat> the other way we can kind of see it's a loss is that, of course, if we if we looked at the equipment, it still had value, meaning it still has undepreciated amount of eleven thousand, the book value is 110 minus the 99. If it had a book value of 11,000 and we didn't get any money for it and we got zero cash, then that would mean it's, a, it's going to be a loss. So we're going to go back over here. It's going to be in the gain loss account. In this case, it's going to be a loss, a debit. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put that over here in B47, right click and paste. One, two, three. Now note this is a little out of order. I think this is the easiest way to construct this journal entry and that's why I'm going to leave it this way. But uh, if, if it's getting picky in terms of the formatting, you might want to then change and put the debits on top. Uh, if you keep it in this format, I think it might be easier to go back and look and say, what did I do? Why did I do it? How did I construct this journal entry? So those are the pros and cons between putting the debits on top or leaving it in whatever structure you think will help you to, one, construct it, two, go back and look at it and see what you did. Okay, so then we're going to say accumulated depreciation and post that. That's going to be over here in H45. There's something in it already, so I'm going to double click on it, go to the end of it, plus, and then point to that 99, bringing the balance uh, down to zero. Then we've got the equipment account here. That's going to go to the equipment account on the trial balance here in cell H44. So within cell H44, we will say equals and point to that 110,000 credit bringing the balance from 110 down by 110 to zero. Then we're going to go to the disposal, so the gain or loss on disposal, in this case loss, on the income statement here. So we're here, we're going to be in H52. We will say equals and point to that 11,000 and enter. So you can see what that did is it's bringing net income down. It went down by 22 overall, 11,000 for the depreciation and another 11,000 for the loss that we recorded when we um, uh, recorded this disposal. And that is means that the income minus the expenses and then minus this loss here, that's where we're getting the 66. So what this is income, net income, the credits beating the debits, minus the 22,000 of depreciation and loss, bringing us to 55,000. Okay, we got one.